Hello, friends, and thank you so much for downloading this week's podcast. We are so excited that you're taking time to grow in your faith by listening to these messages. That's our dream in these sermons. We hope that in some small way, they help you in your walk of faith, help you to grow into the person that God yearns for you to be. We also want to encourage you to be part of our social media family. Every day we try to post encouraging messages on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can simply go to these different social media accounts and click on Saint on the Divine and be part of our social media family. And if you don't live in the Jacksonville area and don't have access to a church, we encourage you that every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we broadcast our Divine Liturgy live. You simply have to go to www.stjohnthedivine.com. That's our church website. At 10 o'clock in the morning, click on live broadcast and you can watch our services live. And finally, we're really excited about a brand new internet radio show that we, we have here at St. of the Divine called Healthy Minds, Healthy Souls. It's broadcast on the second and the fourth Tuesday of every month at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Simply go to ancientfaith.com at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and click on the banner for Healthy Minds, Healthy Souls. We, in this show, we hope that we're kind of merging faith and psychology to kind of give you some practicality in your own walk of faith. So once again, thank you so much for downloading this sermon and we hope to see you soon at Saint on the Divine. God bless you and stay strong in your faith. Today and then this evening, I want to talk to you about connecting to the gift. In the Old Testament, there are over 400 prophecies that speak about this night. 400 of them that speak about the coming of the Lord. King David, a thousand years before Christ ever roamed on planet Earth, talked about how Christ was coming and that he was going to be of the lineage of King David. The prophet Micah, 740 years before the coming of Christ on planet Earth, spoke about how Jesus would be born of a virgin. The prophet Nehemiah, 700 years ago, spoke about how Jesus would be born in a city called Bethlehem. The prophet Jeremiah, 680 years ago, before Christ was ever on this earth, spoke about how Christ was going to be of the lineage under, again, under the lineage of King David. And perhaps one of the most amazing Bible verses in the Old Testament that speak and that prophesies about the coming of Christ this day, 2,000 years ago, was one of my favorites, the prophet Isaiah. He writes this message 700 years before Christ ever walked on this earth. This is what it says. Behold, a virgin will give birth to a son, and on his shoulders will be the governments of all people. He is going to be a mighty Savior, the everlasting Father. He is going to be the wonderful Counselor. He is going to be the Prince of Peace. Why did God speak to Isaiah 700 years before Jesus ever walked on this planet and told him, hey, Isaiah, make sure that you tell all of your people 700 years before Jesus ever walks on this earth and every other generation from that point on, make sure that you tell them that the Lord is coming and he is called the Prince of Peace. Why did God tug at the heart of Isaiah to tell him that? Well, in order for you to know that, why did God say the Prince of Peace? It's the only phrase that's used in the entire Bible, Old and New Testament, except in that one moment. You have to look at the original Hebrew language. The Prince of Peace is three words, but in Hebrew it's only two words. The two words are this, Sar Shalom. Can you all say that with me? Sar Shalom. You just went to Hebrew classes. The word Sar is a unique word. It actually has multiple meanings, and the word Prince, to be quite honest with you, isn't the best Translation. If you actually look at the, uh, the meaning of that word, sar, it has a multiple meanings. Perhaps the greatest of those meanings is this, the one in charge, the leader. It's not a royalty like we would look at royalty like the king or the queen. It is the one who's in charge, sar. And then that word shalom. M- many of you have heard that word before. 
we translate it today as the word peace. And that is a very good translation of it. But there's also another translation that's just as equally as powerful as that. And that is the word, look at me everyone, rest. The Prince of Peace, Sar Shalom. Now the reason why is that he is the leader, the one in charge of your rest. Why did he need to tell us that? Why was that so important to tell us 700 years before Jesus ever even walked on this earth, before you ever heard the sound of a baby crying? Because he knew, God did, that just like then as it is right now, that many of us are not at rest. For many of us, it's not a Christmas, it is a Christmas. For many people, sometimes you're in this church and you're smiling, you're, you're trying your best to get into that Christmas spirit, but maybe you lost a loved one this past year, and it's hard to get into that spirit. It's hard to be at rest. Or maybe for some of you, you've been wishing for that special person to come into your life, and year after year, they, they haven't come, and you're just sitting there going, God, I'm not at rest. And then maybe for some of you, you have a worry on your mind right now. Maybe in this church right now, you want your children to be worshiping with you, and they're not worshiping with you in this church right now, and you're not at rest. And maybe for some of you, there are struggles that you're facing, even your own immediate family, with your children, a spouse, whatever it is. Many of us in this world right now are not at rest. And what God was telling Isaiah and telling all of us, he's coming. He's coming in a manger. Why? Because he's the one in charge of your rest. And if you want to experience the true meaning of Christmas, if you want to embrace the Sar Shalom in your life, can I just tell you something? You can't allow the crises in your life to blind you from having Christ at the head of your life. It's not about trying to take away the some things in your life that are hurting you. It's about bringing the someone who can come and help you. It is having the Sar Shalom in your life. And Father Nick, make this very practical and make it short. So let me do that real quick. Two points. Number one. I want you, uh, let me just go a little bit off script here for a moment. As your priest, I want you to know this. I love you so much. I spend so much time on these sermons because I really believe that I'm just hoping that if just one of you takes a seat of this sermon and it changes your life, it's worth it. And I just want you to know that I'm trying to get you through life to get you to kingdom of heaven. I'm trying to get you through the struggles of this world to get you to the Prince of Peace. So here are the two points. Number one, make the Sar Shalom the head of your life, period. How many of you are in the business world? You can kind of raise your hands up a little bit high, and if you don't feel comfortable doing that, that's okay. We don't really like to raise our hands in church. But in the business world, there's something called quantitative analysis. It is the probability of something happening. So if I was to put a box here in the center of this church and put 10 balls in this box, nine of them were yellow and one was red, the probability of you getting that one ball that was red would be one in 10. That's great. All right. So that's good. It's a good start. Do you know the probability of just eight of those 400 prophecies in the Old Testament coming true, what the probability of that would be? It'd be this. One in 100,000 trillion. Try to stick your box into a ball of 100,000 trillion. Lee Strobel, you should read any of his material, was an atheist, did not believe in Christianity at all. He becomes a Christian because of the fulfillment of these 400 prophecies. He said that in order to kind of give a visual, he said, if you were to take and put one inch by one inch tiles over the entire planet, over all seven continents, including Antarctica, by the way, if you were to simply put one inch by one inch tiles all over the entire world, they were colored white, and only one of them, only one of them, at the very bottom of that one inch by one inch tile, you just painted a little bit of a cross. 
and you had one person roam the entire earth his entire lifetime and only had one chance to bend over and to get that one tile, that's the probability of only eight of those prophecies coming true. And Jesus, check this out, everyone, did all of them. I'm not trying to just kind of persuade you. You're already in church, but that's a scientific fact. That's a religious fact. That is a faith fact. And what I want to encourage you is that God wants to be the head of your life. But for many of us, we're cultural Christians. We like it when God is our Savior. He came to save us of all of our sins. But don't God be the Lord over my life. I like you as my Savior, but don't be Lord. Don't tell me what I need to do. Don't be the Sar Shalom in my life. And by the way, the word Sar, later on the Romans borrow that word, and they make that word Caesar. We oftentimes just kind of want him in parts and not in the others. But can I just give you a word of encouragement, church family? If he's not Lord of all in your life, he's not Lord at all in your life. If he's not part of what you do every single day, then he's not part of your every day. If he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Number two. Make the Sar Shalom part of every part of your life. So get under his leadership. Let him be your Lord. But number two is you make sure that you bring him to everything. If in your family right now Christ is not at the center of your life, can I give you a word of encouragement? Bring him. This is the real deal. If he's not part of your marriage, bring him in. Young people, if he's not part of your school and your academic life, can I give you a word of encouragement? Bring him in. He doesn't want to be in your one day on a Monday or on a Sunday and then go on the rest of the week. Our Lord desires for him to be part of your life every day of the week. You have to make him part of every situation that's in your life. I leave you with this. I'm going to ask our ushers and our leaders to turn the lights off. I'm going to do something a little bit different. We did this last year and hopefully it will impact you. In the Bible, there are 31,103 verses, Old Testament and New Testament, 31,103. It's an odd number. It's kind of wondering why would God have an odd number. It's because there are 15,551 verses on, on one end, and then there is 15,000 501 on another end, and then there's this one amazing verse right in the middle. The very middle verse in the Bible is from that same Isaiah when God speaks to him again, and he says this. I, this is God speaking to you and to me, I will keep you in peace, perfect peace, if you just Keep your mind on me. I will keep you in peace if you keep your mind on me. And my challenge for you, friends, is let's celebrate Christmas. I'm all about it. I mean, drink the eggnog, get the gifts, do it all. Do it right. But if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. If you don't have him as under his leadership, you can't just call him a savior and not the Lord. And to bring him into every aspect of your life because that's what he yearns to be. And my dream for you and for all of you is that tonight and every night you can sleep in heavenly peace.
receive Holy Communion. I just want this light to be the symbol of your soul. That when we leave here today, that there's a lot of darkness in this world. That maybe even you're going through some darkness in your own life. But that you, that you remember that it's not about the crisis. It's about the Christ who on this evening chose to be born in a manger to save us because he is the one in charge of our rest. Please keep your candles lit when you're approaching for Holy Communion and allow, as you're coming for communion, let it be very still, very quiet. Allow just simply be a time for you to simply reflect on your life and may God challenge us all to renew ourselves to receive the newborn king. God bless you all. Merry Christmas.